All right, cool. So, fellas, that's gonna do it for Saturday morning Minecraft and chill. It's not really morning anymore. We're gonna go into space news now. I'm gonna try my hand at it, even though I'm still a little sick. EJ Space and Rocket Review has been initiated. Space and Rocket Review time. Let me put on a video here. I'm gonna take a break. I gotta go check on check on Brimo. Make sure Brimo's okay. Gotta check out, uh, gotta put a video up here. Gotta put a video up here. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Let me find something. I got one. I know what we can put on. Yeah, here we go. All right, I'll be back momentarily. Sunday, April 12th, 1981. Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The Space Shuttle, 14 stories high. 2,000 tons poised on the pad for its maiden flight. This is Columbia, the spaceship that will orbit the Earth. Its external tank, it holds over 500,000 gallons of fuel for Columbia's three main engines. And the solid rocket boosters, the largest ever used on any launch vehicle and the first to be employed in a U.S. manned flight. At liftoff, the solid rocket boosters, together with the three main engines, will unleash more than six and a half million pounds of thrust needed to launch the world's first reusable spacecraft. Never before has a winged vehicle been launched like a rocket, orbited the Earth, returned through frictional heating in excess of 2,500 degrees, and landed. Still aerodynamically sound, to be launched again and again. If it succeeds, the space shuttle will truly be a remarkable flying machine. There are many other goals to be reached during the 54 and a half hour mission that lies ahead. 144 test objectives are planned for the flight. These objectives could not be achieved without an astronaut crew. The commander, John Young. The pilot, Robert Crippen. Young has already been in space four times for a total of 533 hours. He is the most experienced astronaut flying today. Although Crippen has over 4,000 hours of jet aircraft flying time, this will be his first time in space. The astronauts make their way across the access arm toward the shuttle in the pre-dawn hours before launch. An American spaceship has never carried a human crew on its maiden voyage. At the Launch Control Center, three miles from the pad, final steps are being completed in the countdown. Final preparations are also being made in the Mission Control Center in Houston, where control of the flight will switch once the shuttle clears the tower. There has not been a manned launch from Kennedy Space Center since the Apollo-Soyuz test project in July of 1975. With this launch, Young and Crippen, launch controllers at the Cape, 
and flight controllers in Houston will experience the most dynamic, fast-paced series of launch events ever undertaken in the space program, all in less than nine minutes. The most challenging ascent profile ever to be flown by a space vehicle. Photographers, film and television crews, plus newspaper and magazine writers from around the world Nearly 2,700 of them are here to cover the launch. In addition, approximately 600,000 spectators line the coastal area near the Kennedy Space Center. Arriving by every mode of transportation, they have come from every state in the Union and many foreign countries. The promise of a rebirth in America's manned space program and the dawn of a new era in space transportation awaits. 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. the shuttle on its precise heading toward an imaginary target in space. Roll program complete. Roger, roll complete. The shuttle is now 40 seconds into flight. Roger, Columbia on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit. Uh, you'll probably be slightly high at staging. Negative seats. Columbia, you're in negative seats. Should anything go wrong, the shuttle is now too high for the astronauts to use their ejection seats. Roger, you're going for SRB step. The SRB set flight. Roger on a set. 103 converge flight. Vet, Capcom, let's tell them all the calls are going to be a tad early because of the hot first stage. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Okay, map looks good here. Stand by, press to Miko. Columbia, stand by, press to Miko. Mark it. Mark. Press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. The shuttle can now continue toward Miko. Main engine cutoff. They like the VAP, Eagle. Ecom. Let's go, flight. Capcom, VAPs go. Stand by, negative return. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark it. Mark. Negative return. And your VAP is good. Uh, uh, standing. Sure is. We can turn from it. Oh, and single engine rotor flight. And Columbia, your single engine rotor. Columbia can land safely at the Naval Air Station in Rota, Spain, even if two of the three main engines should fail. Right now, the engines are generating over 42 million horsepower. Miko, 25, 6, Miko. 7, 0, up at 200. Roger, Miko. Man, we got Miko confirmed. Miko, Roger, Miko. Right on, on money. Nominal. 
main engine cutoff. Columbia is now in space, traveling over 18,000 miles per hour. Okay, we got that. Roger, we confirm the step, Columbia. The external tank has just been jettisoned and is now falling away from the shuttle back toward Earth. The tank will break up as planned over the Indian Ocean when it comes into contact with the atmosphere. Shortly, by firing the ohms, orbital maneuvering system engines, Columbia will achieve orbit. Then one of the most important tests of the mission will be attempted, opening the payload bay doors. The doors must be opened before the end of the sixth orbit to expose the space radiator cooling system. If the radiators cannot be exposed, heat collected from the onboard electronics cannot be released and the astronauts will have to return home. The Ohm's burns are successful. Columbia is now in orbit, circling the Earth at an altitude of approximately 150 miles. The payload bay doors will now be opened. Okay, the port door is coming open now. Roger, copy. Well, you're missing one fantastic sight. Boy, that is really beautiful out there. Uh, we appreciate those updates. Both doors have been opened. The radiators can be deployed to begin dissipating the heat. The doors are all opened up and uh, hunky dory. Glad to deploy it right on time. And the radiators look good. Okay, we uh we want to show you our own spots here. We do have a, uh, a few tile missing off of, uh, of both of them, uh, off of the uh, starboard pod, three uh, tile and some smaller pieces, and off the port pod, it uh, looks like I see one full square and uh, looks like a few little triangular shapes that are missing, and uh, we're uh, trying to put that on TV right now. Roger, Crip, we can see that good. Uh, from what we can see of both wings, uh, tops and uh, leading edges, though, there's, uh, all of those are fully intact. Within minutes, an assessment is completed on the impact these missing tiles could have on the remainder of the mission. At a news conference later in the day, flight director Neil Hutchison answers questions from reporters. But you asked me if I knew where there were any other tiles that might be loose. The answer is no. Uh, and quite frankly, we're not worried about any other tiles being loose. At this writing, is there anything, anything at all, that would lead you to say you might not go for a full duration mission? Nothing. Columbia, Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple of days. Your gopher on orbit. Spacecraft let's go for on orbit. This thing is just performing, just outstanding. Roger, we agree with that. And Columbia, Houston, uh, just for your information, uh, you dropped those SRVs right on target, and uh, they were floating just the way they ought to be, and uh, the boats were getting ready to fish them and bring them back. Okay. The uh, ride that they gave us was uh, pretty neat. The solid rocket boosters, which separated from the Columbia as planned, two minutes, 11 seconds into the flight, landed on target in the Atlantic Ocean, 151 miles downrange from the launch site. After being towed back to Kennedy Space Center, both boosters will be refurbished and used again in a future shuttle flight. The third and fourth Ohms burns are also successful raising Columbia's orbit to an altitude of approximately 172 miles. For the first television transmission from inside the spacecraft, the crew will give a status report on the mission. The flight so far has gone uh, uh, as smooth as it could possibly go. We've uh, done uh, every uh, test that we're supposed to do, and we're up on the timeline, and the vehicle has just been performing, uh, performing beautifully, much better than anyone ever expected.
Okay, we're switching over to uh, to the app camera here. Yeah, I'd like to echo John's words as I usually do. I guess uh, being the so-called rookie on this flight, I had a, a thrill from from the moment of liftoff all the way up to what we're doing now. It was really been super. The spacecraft has worked as advertised all the way along. I think we've got something that's really going to mean something to the country and the world. This vehicle is uh, performing like a champ, like all of us that have worked so long on it, knew, knew that you would. Okay, sir, we appreciate those comments. I guess that does it. That was a good time, and I think you must have practiced. We're just about to lose your ghost song. Just accident. Just accident, says Robert Griffin. None of the other events of the day have been accidental. Every test, liftoff, SRB separation and recovery, ET separation and impact, four ohms burns, payload bay door latch opening and closing tests, radiator latch deploy and stowing tests have all been successful. I guess we owe you guys one super attaboy for today. I, this is fantastic. You worked through a pretty long, hard day, and you're essentially right on schedule, which I, is going to be close to being a first sort of space flight biz, I think, for a first day activity. It's sure been fun working with you today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the morning. I hope you get a good night's rest. Okay, you guys did super work today. See you manana. Roger, thank you. See you tomorrow, guys. Thing. A job well done by the shuttle space team. We can't say that she's sleek and lean, but I'll tell you right now, she's a mean machine. The Columbia, not the kind you smoke. This here's a bird. She gets Morning, Columbia. Welcome to day two. All right. Appreciate that super wake-up music this morning. Well, we sure enjoyed it. Today, the astronauts will test onboard systems and also review procedures for tomorrow's landing. A test of the flight okay, control yeah. system John is conducted by John Young. Television. Television. The flight okay. control system operates Columbia's aero surfaces, the elevons, body flaps, rudder, and speed brake. These surfaces are useless in the vacuum of space, but will be essential tomorrow when the shuttle lands. This will require precision maneuverability which the aero surfaces provide. Payload bay door cycling tests help ensure that latching and closing procedures can also be done before entry tomorrow. As with every mission, many pictures of the Earth are taken by the astronauts. Over 500 on this first shuttle flight active volcanoes, cloud formations, alluvial fans, giant whirlpools over 15 miles in diameter, sand dunes 1,500 feet high running unbroken for hundreds of miles. The high Himalayas where mountain peaks reach 24,000 feet and one of the most remarkable space photographs ever taken of the Earth, an area in Iran exposed to wind erosion, which has resulted in these breathtaking silt and sandstone formations that look more like a painting than a desert. After lunch on the second day, the astronauts receive a phone call from the Vice President of the United States, George Bush. How's it going up there? Everything rocking along all right? Spaceship is just performing beautifully. Well, it's great, and everybody views it, I'm sure, just as the forerunner of great things to come. I think your trip is just going to ignite the excitement and the forward thinking from this country, so I really just wanted to call up and wish you the very best. We well, appreciate it, Mr. Vice President. The crew also don and check out the ejection suits they will wear during entry. Young, Crippen, and Columbia pass every test. They are ready for the final phase of the mission, entry and landing.
April 14, 1981, NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center on the edge of Rogers Dry Lake Bed in California. A recovery convoy of 24 vehicles and more than 100 personnel are assembling here to power down Columbia after landing. Enormous crowds are also beginning to arrive. A string of traffic six miles long waits to enter the base. Thousands more are already here. Close to one half million people will eventually be on hand to see the landing. On board, the astronauts suit up for entry. The ascent and orbital phases of the mission have gone extremely well. Now the final phase must be completed. Before that begins... Columbia, you have a go for payload bay door closing. The doors, which have been opened a total of 47 hours during the flight, must now be closed. Then, using the RCS thrusters, Columbia will maneuver into deorbit burn attitude, head down and backwards, fire the Ohm's engines one last time, and descend into the Earth's atmosphere. John, we're all riding with you. Columbia is out of contact during the Ohm's burn. Mission Control will not know if this burn was successful until they are in communication with the spacecraft over Australia. It is now over the Indian Ocean on the other side of the world, but from that distance the burn must be precise so that later Columbia will hit the lake bed target in California. Columbia, this is Houston through Yargity. We're standing by. Columbia is now committed to entry. With an RCS post-burn maneuver and several firings, it is oriented to a heads-up, nose-first attitude headed toward entry interface. This is where the atmosphere begins, at approximately 400,000 feet. From that moment until the shuttle reaches 165,000 feet, it will be in communication blackout, out of touch with mission control for almost 20 minutes. The landing site is almost 4,400 miles from entry interface. Chase planes are preparing to take off. One will call out altitudes and check Columbia for any damage just prior to landing. When the shuttle touches down here, it will be traveling at 216 miles per hour. Right now it's going more than 17,000 miles per hour. Before it lands, it must slow down lose energy, and it must survive the intense heat caused by traveling through the atmosphere at such a high rate of speed. Several S-turns, or roll reversals, are used to slow down and maneuver Columbia through the atmosphere. This one is done at 256,000 feet, when it is traveling at more than 26 times the speed of sound. This one is done at 208,000 feet. During these two roll reversals, entry heating is most severe, with temperatures reaching 2,500 degrees some places on the vehicle. The aluminum skin will melt at 320 degrees. The silicate tiles must insulate the vehicle from the tremendous heat. Since there is no test facility on Earth to simulate the aerodynamic and structural environment Columbia is in right now, only calculations could be used to predict what would happen during this phase of the flight. The predictions and calculations you see that? had to be right. The shuttle, when it hits entry, when it's doing the S-turn, it's coming in like this, and then it flips over and does that. And we couldn't agree more, John. Mach 10.3. We've got the good day in here. The entry trajectory, velocity, and position look good. Columbia is heading for home. Thanks, Now Isaac. only 470 miles away. 
Right, we're showing you roll. And John, we're showing you rolling right. Looking good. Right, Roger, got we're my roll. Crossing the coastline, flag. Well, we coast. show you crossing the coast now. The shuttle uh. is first sighted at about 100,000 feet with a long-range camera from Anderson Peak, California. That's pretty neat. What a way to come to California. And flat better, I still look perfect. 1981, right? Artman, is fr this, this mission. Roger 81. that, out of 112 K, 4.8 Mach. Yeah, baby! Now that's a roll. We see Dell as 21 degrees. Right there. A roll reversal is done over Bakersfield, California. See? <laughs> I saw George Bush in Assume 1989. Well, he was, he was Reagan's VP, so this 1981, he would have just, they would have just gotten in there. Nice roll. Beautiful. Hey, there she is. And we're seeing 1.3 G's coming around the hat. Yeah, all right. The astronauts are making the final turn to line up with the runway. I was not here yet by about seven years. <laughs> Columbia, you're really looking good. Right on the money. Right on the money. And turning on the final, your winds on the surface are calm. Oh, that's so freaking cool. You're right on the glide slope, Columbia. Oh, dude, we need another one of these. We need another one of these. This thing is too cool. Everything looks real good. There's no tile or other damage is evident underneath the shuttle. Columbia's altitude is now just over 5,000 feet. That's right, that's right, Sumo. Actually, when I was in New Mexico, I had the... Uh, the pleasure of uh, meeting some guys that work on Dream Chaser, which is actually really cool. Pretty clear. Yeah, here we go. Columbia must land. It cannot make another attempt. Gear coming. Gear coming. Gear is down. Down. Yeah, Brian, you see it dive bomb the runway, it's just like, Yoop! and then it pulls up at the last second. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. I like that a lot. <coughs> oh, she's a beast. Five, four, three. Two, one, touchdown. Those gears come. Something like that, starch face. Greased. Frickin' greased. Five, four. Three. Touchdown. Fuck him off, Skimmer. Houston, Columbia is on the rollout. Do we have any footage from the plane? Columbia's on the rollout. I don't think so. Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful. Want to take us up the hangar, Joe? Got to dust it off first. Take it up the hangar, Joe. <laughs> We're gonna dust it off first. This is world's greatest all electric flying machine. I'll tell you that it was super. If John Young says it's good, it's good. It's good. If he says it's a good piece of equipment, you can try to you can try to disagree. You'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. It's that simple. Hey, Celtic, okay, thanks. Appreciate it. We'll stop. How did that thing work on the first try? How is that even possible? The maiden voyage what of the Columbia frick? has been a success. <coughs> the astronauts <coughs> How does that even happen? Or exceeded all 144 flight test objectives. Purge down. The integrity of all the systems. You guys are wearing the scape suits the because it's a hydrazine system. Avionics, spectral, flight control. Oh, this is the best part. This is my favorite part. Have been affirmed. Watch, just watch John Young. John oh man, that thing was good. Home. That thing was the. This. I can't tell you what Look a at this thing. that is to the American you. working man. 
You did good. Working woman too. You get over here and shake your head, sir. Can't variety of people who worked on this vehicle. Get over here. From all walks of life, all capabilities and limitations. It's all due to individual efforts. They proved that they can do the job. They proved it for the world to see. And I'm mighty proud to be associated with folks like that. <laughs> what a tribute indeed. <laughs> the Columbia represents an achievement in aerospace technology That's right, Aldous and development never before realized in the history Unbelievable, of space flight. It's ballsy. It is our basic yeah. building block for the future. Yeah. It's what we've been trying to do for the last 10 years. We've got a vehicle with Good a job, boys. performance that will allow Woo. us to do that. Much cheaper than we've been able to do it before. It will immeasurably improve the defensive capability of the country. It will help develop space science and technology. When we get operational, the space shuttle will be able to do in five to ten years what it would have taken us twenty to thirty years to do otherwise. We couldn't do it if we didn't have the space shuttle and that payload capability. And the sooner we do those things, the better off the country's going to be. See, John Young gets it. <clears throat> John Young gets it. He understands. Here, here. Now, now watch this. Now watch this next part without the audio. But watch John Young. I'm, I'm never gonna not show this. I show this every time. It's still funny. Watch John Young. Man, did you see that thing? Did you see that? Look at that. I tell you, you come over here, man. I'm gonna shake your hand. Yeah, I'm shaking your hand. I'm shaking your hand. Man, did you did you see this thing fly? Holy crap! I flew the heck out of this thing. Damn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you see that over there? Yeah, I see it. I flew the damn thing. Don't need to tell me. John, get back here. You got to get into the trailer so we can get away. No, 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 man. I'm going to look over my look over my boat. Thank oh, man. Damn. Got to find somebody's hand to shake. Where's somebody? Somebody's hand? Somebody's hand? Those guys over there? Oh, no. Wait, those escape guys. You guys did good. All right. Can't go over there. Yeah. <laughs> Guy's just looking around for people's hands to shake. <laughs> That's the best, man. It makes me so happy. He's so freaking pumped, dude. Uh, Gilmore, later this year, me and the wife are going to come to the USA. Nice. Where should we go if I want to see space stuff? Kennedy Space Center, dude. Is it worth it going to Cape Canaveral? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. It's right hand. Dude, he's so freaking fired up, man. <laughs> and, okay, the reason why this is so funny, dude, the reason, the reason why that's hilarious to me is because, all right, if you don't know John Young, all right, so John Young is, that guy right there is the real, real-life Jebediah Kerman. He flew two Gemini missions, two Apollo missions. Both of them went to the moon. Guys landed on the moon, he's driven a car on the moon, and he flew the first space shuttle mission, and he was the first guy to fly two space shuttle missions. If he says it's good, it's good, all right? But John Young did all that, and he was cal cal calm as a cucumber, the cool as a cucumber the entire time. Guy never showed emotion. He was like the Kimi Raikkonen of freaking astronauts. He just, yeah, all right. You know, freaking launch to the moon with Charlie Duke. Charlie Duke sitting in the chair going, oh, my God, what am I doing? And John Young's like, yeah, this is neat. The guy, he was always known for keeping his cool. Just kept his cool all the time. So to see to see him fired up, that should tell you everything you need to know about how ridiculous the space shuttle actually is. This is the only time, this is the only time you'll ever see footage of him being like, that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, you gotta go to Cape Canaveral, Gilmore. Oh yeah, you gotta see the space shuttle and the Saturn V. Like, guys, like so hype, he's just looking around for people's hands to shake. Look, babe, did you see that thing? Did you see that? You get over here, man. Get over here. I'm gonna shake your hand, man. I'm gonna shake your hand too. I don't even know who you are. I'm shaking your hand, man. Did you see this damn thing? Oh, oh, man. I I flew the crap out of that thing. <laughs> It's so funny. It makes me laugh so much. That's the best part, dude. It's the best part. He's so freaking hyped up. Just go around and shake your hand. What do you do? I clean the toilets. I'm shaking your hand, man. Your hand's getting shaken. Oh, okay. You know. That's the best, dude. Makes me so happy. 
Mm. Anyway, that's a remarkable flying machine. Great early NASA documentary about STS-1. And and now on to something completely different. A flying bus. You damn right it is. It's a flying bus in it <laughs> for a brick. It flew pretty good. <laughs> for a brick. <laughs> Oh, boy. <coughs> okay. So, hey, Mutter, 82-month resub. Thanks, man. Here. You guys want to see something cool? You guys want to see something cool? Welcome to Space News, first of all. We're going to lead off Space News with this. So I'm in Texas for... Let's see, Emily, what's that? Hold on real quick. I'm in Texas for about a month. Am I going to be able to see the Starship launch? <sighs> That's cool, Fetty. Awesome. Your great uncle worked on the guidance system for the original Redstone rocket. Neat. Uh, I should have words to describe this, but I'm going to leave this one up to the great, the great Sammy Hagar and just say, Hello, baby. Okay, that's all we can play of that before someone gets mad. Mm. Hello, baby! <coughs> mm. SpaceX posted this a little while ago. Uh, I, d um, I, words. Hello, babe! <laughs> yep, don't hate that. And also, check this out. We got a shot up the business end of uh, Ship 24. Look, they're working on a dance floor. That's the word. I couldn't figure out the word for it. But there's definitely some protective plating here. And it looks like the, the Raptor engines are going to have a protective boot on them. That's The boot is going to go right here. See that? Now that. That's pretty neat. Yeah, see, you can see the bulkhead right there, and then there's going to be some protective covering. You see the covering is already there for the uh, for the Vactor. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get a thermal barrier between the hot part, which is this part right here, this part, this part in this area gets pretty hot, and then the turbine machinery, which you want to be cold. See that? See the turbine machinery in there? You want that to be, you want that to be cool because yeah it needs to move cold propellants you don't want to heat them up before they get into the part where they get heated up yes this is this is a great explanation no there it's just a thermal barrier right there it's the floor of the engine room yeah that's right check that out though is that is that ridiculous or what that exists this is not it's it's not a render it's not a render these aren't mock-ups that's the real deal man that's the real deal. That's just a little crazy to me. Do they fire all six in the vacuum? Yep. Yep. It's unbelievable that this actually exists. That's that's crazy to me. That, that no one's no one. No one has ever tried this. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, actually, the closest <laughs> the closest one would be Falcon Heavy with 27 engines. That's 33. <laughs> yeah, you love that this is the upper stage. <clears throat> Dude, you know what's crazy? Starship, by far and away, is the most powerful second stage ever devised. It, I think it bests the uh, it bests the Saturn V second stage, which is an S the S two, which has five thousand kilonewtons of five thousand kilonewtons of thrust. This has uh, uh, fifteen meganewtons. It's twenty four hundred. 2400 per engine yeah yeah oh yeah that approaching 15 meganewtons of thrust 
Oh, um, that's more powerful than most first stages. That's more powerful than Falcon 9's first stage. <laughs> There's more power from those six engines than there are from nine Merlins. <laughs> okay. <coughs> uh, <coughs> wow, that's, that's a lot of power, man. Unbelievable. Unfricking believable. We'll talk more about Starship in a little bit. In the meantime, oh, oh yeah, Tori Bruno has his survey results back. Let's see. Based on survey results, and I'm assuming the 5% who voted that space is boring just had hot dog fingers. <laughs> Here's a picture of B4 Flight 1. Standard Brian is busy indicator building a booster. Standard, yeah, okay. So this fine blue origin gentleman kindly stood in for scale. Yep. It's, uh, yikes. What is the fuel that starships and super heavies use again? Rivian, hey, uh, it's uh, liquid methane. Liquid methane, liquid oxygen. Hmm. Hmm. That, uh... Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, I don't hate what's going on here. Yeah, that's... That's nice. That's nice. <coughs> I, I, sometimes... Sometimes, guys, words are not needed. Sometimes you, I just... Don't need to say anything. Dumb question, but is it finite? If not, how is it made? What? EJ, me boy! 9-5, me boy! What do you mean, is it finite? I'm confused. Yeah, could you right? Oh, no, hey, look at ours. No, look at ours. No, look at ours. All right. I'll just look at all the things. I want one rocket engine. I want all the rocket engines. I was only curious. I, I, what, what is, what do you, I, I'm not, I, I don't understand your question, Rivian. What, dumb question, but is it finite? Is what finite? Fuel? I mean, yeah, you run out of that. I don't understand the question. I don't know. It, I don't understand what you're trying to ask. 95, you're currently in a Boeing 777. Ah, Boeing 5, me boy. How close is this to working? Oh, it works. They wouldn't be building the flight engines if it didn't work. In if you're talking, if you're asking in terms of how close this is to being finished, it's got a little ways to go. You're missing a good amount of parts. This is in a, this is still in this, the assembly phase. I meant how is it acquired? Oh, uh... Methane? It's just hydrogen and carbon. I mean, uh, right now SpaceX has fact they buy they buy from factories that make it. I, in terms of how it's made, I don't know. I don't know. Probably could get it out of the ground. Could make it. Cow farts can do it. <laughs> Anyway, that's a pretty awesome picture coming there from Tori Bruno. Anyway, let's see what else we got. So we got nice pictures of the B4s. Oh, here's a picture from Kyle, actually. That just popped up. So this is coming from uh, Kyle Montgomery. He he's pops in. Kyle pops in from time to time around here. Uh, the SLS post-wet dress rehearsal has moved into the VAB. They moved it back, and there's a picture of it going back into its house. Something like that, Hellfish, yeah. Hmm. That is a pretty nice picture. You know what, Kyle? Kyle you know what, Kyle? I'm putting this in my... Kyle needs to... You know, I'm just... I just gotta tell him I'm just gonna put that in my collection of SLS pictures. That's a, that's a really nice picture. I like this picture. Hmm. It's pretty good. Next time this thing comes out of the 
comes out of the uh, of high bay three, it's going to uh, it's going to space, which is pretty sweet. That should be happening sometime in the last week, last two weeks of August. Phil, what's this? Oh, yeah, here we go. Also, last night, I didn't get a chance to cover it, but Virgin Orbit popped off their rocket. Watch this. Good morning. So this was launched off of a 747. It's a rocket, it's a rocket that's mounted to a 747's wing. Release, release, release. Watch. Yes. Confirmed release. Oh. Okay. Oh, yep. No, there you go. He is he's ignited. Newton 3 startup complete. We sang it. We sent it. Everyone's <laughs> going straight up to space. Ace copies. Well done. Oh, that's Incredible really job, cool. Man. Awesome. In the studio, nice can we switch over to MCC audio? Stage one burn nominal. Let's get up to staging here. And we're definitely getting higher in the sky. Three that's shut the... down confirmed. Ah, engine can shut down. Stage oh, there it goes. Oh, that's cool. Come on, stage, stage two. Has separated. You can force that's complete. Most excellent. Okay, so that was a call out. Let's check the track. Very nice. So that was last night, guys. Uh, if you're wondering wh what we were looking at, like why the shots didn't look that good in here. And like, wait, where's the launch pad? Well, that was Virgin, uh, that was Virgin Orbit. They, uh, they have a very, very, very interesting launch pad. Uh, if you're wondering, here, take a, take a look. Here, let me let me show you. Let me show you a nice picture. The reason why the, the the camera angles are a little weird during launch is because well, Virgin Orbit has a mobile launcher. It's a mobile launcher that flies. Yeah. There you go. Had to drive a while away from my house to see if I got a pretty cool shot of it along with terrible quality. Hey. There you go. Sweet. So, Check that out. They're using the fifth pylon on a 747 to launch this rocket. This is a liquid fuel rocket that they launch into space off of the wing of a 747. Yep, yep, yep. This is November 744 Victor Gulf. Virgin Galactic. <laughs> no, it's not Virgin Galactic. It's Virgin Orbit. Virgin Galactic does the people thing. The next one is going from Drummerland. That's right. <clears throat> yep. That's how they launch. That's why they, that, that red thing that was on the camera right there, if we back it up a little ways. There's the wing. There's the pylon. This is on This is on a rocket that was launched off of a 747. This was last night, which is actually really cool. Virgin Galactic, I haven't seen anything, Mars Resident. Yeah, I think they still are. They flew way out of their TFR, dude. Uh... Yeah, from what I understand. So, not not ideal for them. But what that 7-4 does is it flies up. It flies up, right? Look at the ground behind me. It flies up, and then it lets the thing go, and then it peels off. Basically, yutes this thing up into, up, up to, like, what is it, like 35,000 feet, and then it lets it go, which is really freaking cool. You can launch at any inclination. That's right, from anywhere. The VG, <laughs> the VG does actually stand for Virgin Galactic as they purchased the aircraft and then after they split the rocket launch stuff into a different company. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, pretty sweet. It's almost like Pegasus. Same idea, but that's way... I, 
I mean, Tri-Stars are cool with Pegasus, but that's way cooler to me. Because 747. <laughs> anyway, so that was last night. Uh, that was pretty awesome. I think I want to get into launch photography. Do you know if there's any collection on resources on how to get started? Get a DSLR and show up. <laughs> Seven forty seven and cryogenic rocket. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to look around for more pictures, see what else is going on. Oh, uh, I didn't get a chance to... This is not news that came out today, but uh, I didn't get a chance to share this. Uh, NASA has said that uh, July 12th is the first day that we're going to get a picture from James Webb. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. I don't really have anything to link or show you guys yet. I will, I will in 10 days, though. <laughs> uh, Yeah, phone sister, you probably shouldn't go around telling people that at this point, dude. But congratulations either way. Exoplanet Spectra expected. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right. Let me look through the rest of this. Yeah, here, look at, look at this picture from Trevor. Yikes. She's a beast. I have, I have one question. If there's no life detected on Europa or Mars, where will that lead us? I don't know. I think that, uh, that gives you another question. Why? <laughs> you know? Go figure it out. You're gonna have to go to Mars. You're gonna have to figure that stuff out. It's always been, it's always been how I look at it. I don't really, to be honest, I don't really care if there's life on Mars or not. We should figure out if there is, and if there is, we should go there and figure out why. And if there isn't, we should also go there and figure out why. Notice the unifying theme here. We should go. Hey, Burbs, 39 month resub. That's my most favorite pointy thing. All right, what is this, Thomas? Blue Origin is moving into the warehouse area formerly used by SpaceX for its recovery teams. New permits show. Blue's specific plans aren't known, but it will be used by the company to support recovery, oper <laughs> recovery operations. The second picture shows SpaceX faring in the warehouse in 2020. Ah, interesting. That's coming from Jared. That picture's coming from Jared Bates right there. Yeah. That's the Space Hab, isn't it? That's the old Space Hab facilities? Seen this one yet. Artemis Beauty Shots. Oh, boy. I haven't seen that one, but that was cool. Uh, let's see. I've been basically completely out of the loop this entire week. Because, yeah, even stuff, that, even stuff that I checked into, Thomas, I'm still like, eh. Oh. Oh. Looks like the FAA cleared Virgin Galactic to fly again, but they are fixing the vehicle after they found structural problems. Looks like they got Go Fever to beat Blue. Whoops!
that's nice. Orang Rocket, good. <coughs> Whoa. Just that eye candy. What are they sweeping shots from? Uh, camera, but that's not important right now. This is just from NASA public affairs officers going out and taking some footage. There's the hydrogen torch in front. I think it needs a coat of white paint. Get out. Get out. Get out. I mean, what video? I want to see it. It's just NASA B-roll. Link. Here, I'll link it. I'll link it in chat. Oh, Thomas already did it. There you go. Link's in chat. Nice footage. It was a joke, Destiny. It was a joke, Rendezvous. Yeah. <laughs> it was the SDS-1 joke. Something like that, Forge, yeah. Man, this thing's gonna go. Dave, I impressed my boss today. We finished wiring a 3,000 square foot house in 10 hours. Starting to enjoy your job. Wow, dude. That's cool. It, the spray on foam insulation, Jim, the more it gets... Uh, the more it gets exposed to atmosphere, the deeper orange color it becomes, yeah. You could tell because the vehicle staging adapter has been outside for less time than the core stage, which has been outside for a really long time. The deeper the orange, the more time it's been outside. And this one's been outside a lot. Have you seen this? The reference guide. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I've seen it, Bone Sister. Unless they updated it recently, in which case, no. Proposed action. Oh, that's pretty sweet. <coughs> Thrawn, get in there! 44 months. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's right, Starch Face. Mm -hmm. Look at how orang it is. Mm. It becomes ripe. It becomes, she becomes ripe. See, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want it to be too light. No, no. You have to wait until it gets a nice ripe orange. Then you know the rocket's ready to go. That's that's physics. It's inevitable. What? What? That makes sense. Yeah, it's like yeah. You gotta wait for it to become ripe. See, see, this is ripe. Not the top though. We gotta wait for the top to turn just a little bit, and then then we'd be good to launch. Purple area is the new factory. Okay. So that was SLS B-roll footage before they rolled it back. They rolled it back uh, this morning, basically. So what is this? Forge? That's Roberts Road. What the hell? Whoa. This is coming from this. Oh, that's cool, Pledge. Neat. So, is SLS good or still ha does it still have problems? No, it's fine. It passed the wet dress rehearsal. It got, well, it got close enough to satisfy NASA's criteria. Uh, they're rolling it back for final checks, and then it should roll out to the pad and uh, sometime next month, Ando. Uh, and, yeah, we should be ready to go. They're targeting the 23rd through the 6th. 23rd of August through the 6th of September. Roberts Road Operational Area Expansion at the Kennedy Space Center. Oh. Man. 
Public and agency scoping. Environmental assessment. SpaceX Roberts Road Operations Area. We are here. <sighs> wow. Uh, so this is the area that SpaceX already has, and that's the area that they want to go. They're that... Uh, okay. Will you be going to the launch? Maybe. Did you enjoy... Did you enjoy the newest Raptor pictures? Yeah, of course. Yeah, duh. <laughs> They're amazing. That's sweet, man. Yeah, that makes a little more sense why they were building out this road. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty large. SpaceX is building a Starship facility right here, a manufacturing facility for Starship. Uh, they're building it right there, and yeah, they just basically proposed to triple the amount of land that they're using for that factory down there, which is pretty insane. Um, that's a big honking factory. <coughs> <coughs> Does the FAA work on this environmental assessment too? No, nah. it's Kennedy Space Center for this part. This isn't the this isn't the launching, and they already have FAA clearance. Believe it or not, the EIS for 39A was completed a long time ago. So this that's just the environmental assessment for building out the factory, which shouldn't be nearly as much. How big is that compared to the one in Boca Chica? Um, someone, you see the retention pond right there retention pond over that area that's the size of the Boca Chica build site right here from here to here that's the size of Texas yeah so it yes yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty large it's pretty big yeah that's that's pretty big so that's very interesting that they're gonna add the uh, that they're gonna add all that space So, I think that's all the, the interesting space news for the day. We could go check out the latest Boca Chica footage, speaking of that. Here, look at this. So, this is coming from our buddies over at NASA Space Flight. Nick uh, did all the videos for this video, uh, for this one, Nick and Sweeney, and then the, the NSF robots here. Look at that. There's the mystery box, the Pez dispenser. All right, I'll check that out in a second, Forge. Yeah, just as we thought, they're just gonna pick the thing up with a crane to load payloads into Starship. They're also gonna need a lot of workers, yep. I mean, they're scaling like unbelievably quick staples, that's for sure. It's about three Boca Chicas, <laughs> yep. That's a pad down in Texas. It does have the super heavy booster on it. I am against the mega megaing everything, Jim, so I don't want to call it that. We'll just call it the Pez Dispenser. More commodities being dropped off. We're going to see a static fire from this booster sooner rather than later, dudes.
Crit Vins. Raptor platform. Huh. The Edom prototype seemed to work pretty well. I agree, Blue. Yeah, it's probably going to be after the holidays. I suppose SpaceX went the route they did with the launch pad because giving the exhaust more outs, less degradation of the pad for launch. Uh, I think they did it because... I think they did a pedestal mount like this because having a flame trench is just something that you need to maintain. Hellfish, you hold the rocket high enough up in the air, it doesn't matter. Saturn 1B is a good example of that. Less pad maintenance. I'm pretty sure that's why those extenders are here. See the extender pieces? Cape pad doesn't have this. The cape pad is just, it's diagonal all the way up to where my finger is. I think they just wanted to just raise this off the ground as much as possible. <clears throat> raise this up off the ground as much as possible so you don't have to worry about uh, you don't have to worry about maintaining a flame deflector you don't need as much water pretty much health is yeah I mean, what's that See, dude, have you seen the Orbex prototype of Europe's first micro-orbital rocket? Yes, I have. The rocket is to benefit from the unique solution of using biofuel, specifically biopropane and propane accessories. As a result, each prime flight is expected to produce 90% less greenhouse gases than the rockets of similar design and size. Well, that's neat. Yeah, we know about that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. Jeez, look at the size of that thing. Are you sure the K-pad won't get extensions? The pillars need a lot of time for concrete to cure. Yes, I'm sure. I just saw a great film about the resurrected 4014 big boy. Nice, after watching your, after watching us talk about the amazing machine, I had great respect for the engineering that went into that beast. Yeah, she's a monster. 6,000 horsepower, man. When you absolutely need to move everything all at once. Yeah, it's a great locomotive. It should fix the other ones. If that's the case, why would other groups use traditional flame deflectors instead of just milk stools? This isn't meant to be saying you're wrong, but just rather asking why other people do it outside of just pre-existing infrastructure. In frequency of launch. In frequency of launch? I mean, someone, I think SpaceX is anticipating launching a lot. I, think, I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to assume, I suppose. Um, so... Uh, uh okay... I'll check that out, Forge. So, I think, you know, launch pad, the launch pad's already complicated enough, someone, so the best part is no part, but it's probably simpler to make a diverter, right? And I think no one, I mean, someone, if you think about it, who's building new pads? Anyone? Anyone building, like, starting with a dirt field, right? Think about this for a second. Is anyone using a dirt field? No. So let's take relativity, for instance, right? LC-16, they're using a pre-existing pad. So it's better to use the infrastructure that you have, right? Right, so, I mean, that's why most rockets have flame deflectors nowadays because nobody's building a brand new pad, right? So I think that probably has something to do with it, if I had to guess. Uh, that, and once again, in frequency of launches, you don't, you don't need to, uh, you don't, you, you know, if you're if you're aiming for like five launches a year, who okay, five launches a year, that's a lot of downtime, so you can refurb the pad between launches. It's not that big of a deal, right? 
I think because SpaceX is going for such a high frequency of launches that they're just like, screw the flame deflector. It's just a piece that gets in the way, quite literally. Uh, that's just a theory, though. I'm not sure. I think people use flame deflectors because of infrequency of launches, and they're, they're using pre-existing pads. No one's building a new pad, right? But don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure that even if somebody was building a new pad, they'd still go with a deflector because of infrequency of flight, you know? <clears throat> Astra saved money by digging a flame trench during launch. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, I'm pretty sure that wasn't intended, Austin, but you, you know, it, it, it happened. <laughs> it, it happened. <laughs> it's about your launch architecture with a milk stool. You have to lift it up there. Traditionally with KSC, you have to roll out a rocket from the VAV. You have your height set by that unit. Yeah, something like that. And anyway, on space, build a huge, build a built a huge pad with a huge diverter, right? Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who were the guys that ran around the rocket while testing it and called it bold? Python. We don't talk about them. That's that new building. Looks like my garage. They scrapped Booster 5. You hate to see it. Onward and upward. Next booster. <clears throat> yeah from what I can tell guys ship 24, 25, 26 and 27 are all in the pipeline in various, various points in the manufacturing process but there's four starships in the pipe right now in the manufacturing pipeline I should say in the pipe 5 by 5 can I take your order Man, that mystery box is huge. Look at that thing. Ship 25 Pez was cut a day ago. Nice. They cut out the Pez dispenser. Nice. Why is SpaceX going to launch a fully stacked Starship Plus booster off of the new pad? I mean, it's the first test flight. What if it goes wrong? They have to build a new pad they have to build a new launch tower and chopsticks and pad. Well, Violent, I have a theory. I have a theory about that if you want to entertain me for a second. I have an interesting theory about this. Uh, you see this thing right here? My theory is that that's designed to take a rud. This pad. This pad is designed to get blown up. It, it, it should be able to take a, a hit. Like, the stool should be able to take a hit from the rocket. The tower should be able to take a hit from the rocket. Like, I'm not, like, not like a direct hit, like going sideways into it, but a glancing hit. I'm guessing that the tower is overbuilt. Now, why? why? Who designs a freaking launch pad to take a hit? Like, who, who takes into account a rud? Like, why would you ever do that? You, you shouldn't build your pad that way, anticipating that your rocket is going to explode, right? That's not really what engineering is about. You don't just kind of put it together and be like, mm, all right, that, that works. That's not how you do that. Now, with that being said, Violent, let's think. Turn, turn your brain for a second. Move the gears. Why would you build that? Why would you build that thing to be able to take a hit? Why would you do that? They don't mind blowing things up. Well, that has something to do with it, Staples. For landings. Bingo. You got it. For landings. If you're going to build the pad strong enough to be able to receive super heavy coming down, it should be strong enough and going up, right? Going up and coming down. I'm, I don't think a RUD is high on SpaceX's priority list. 
Like, and even if it does, even if it does blow up, all right, whatever. Put it, fix the pad, put another one out there. Think about it, right? Because you're right, putting, <laughs> you're right, putting this thing together, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, putting this, putting this thing out on the pad all together once on the first try and then set hitting the go button is a little ballsy, don't you think? That's a little, it's crazy, but SpaceX wouldn't, they, w they would be still trying to minimize risk some way, in some way, shape, or form. My guess is that the pad is designed to be able to take a hit. It's designed to be able to take Super Heavy blowing up right next to it because that's most likely what's going to happen the first time they catch something, am I right? I mean, that's by, Sp and that isn't me being a doubter by any means. That's by SpaceX's own admission. I'm pretty sure Elon said, he's like, yeah, yeah, we're probably not going to catch it on the first try. I think I'm pretty sure he said if the thing gets off the pad, it'll be it'll be a freaking miracle. <laughs> so, but if it does not launch, it may destroy the tower. It would be a waste of time and money. Okay, I, I guess I, I I apparently did not make myself clear enough, because violent that conversation just went like this. Oh, what if the, why are they going to send it? The the tower might explode. Because the rocket might the rocket might blow up. Well, Violin, it might it's probably not it's probably designed to be able to take a rud because you wouldn't put the whole rocket on the pad if it wasn't be able to able to take a rud because it's designed to catch boosters. And then you said, Oh, but what if it blows up? I, it, what, do you, what do you want me to do with this? I I, I, don't, I don't understand what you want me to like what, what, what do you want are you trying to get me to say something? Like what do you want me to say? Rudd equals rapid unplanned disassembly. Yeah, for everybody that wants to know what that means. <clears throat> so, so what if it blows up? Build another one. Do we know if there's any chance for the hop test? I don't know, someone. I think there's still their site is still on orbital, and then fill in the rest of the blanks for Starship's flight profile as you as you launch more. I'm pretty sure that's the plan. Yeah, Scoggs, I'm kind of with you on that one. Let's just hope the tank farm isn't too close. Mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah, uh, Mylon, I'm not sure what you want me to say. You're like, oh, well, what if it blows up? It's a waste of money. I gave you a pretty compelling reason to the contrary, and then you said, oh, well, what if it blows up? Like, I don't know what you want. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say, man. Yeah, it could blow up, or it could work. I mean, and if it works, then it's not a waste of money. And if it blows up, the only the only time that if, if it blows up and destroys the pad or anything, if that does happen, the only time that's going to be a complete failure and a waste of money is if you didn't learn anything from it. Look, SpaceX put this thing together pretty damn fast. Pretty sure they could do it again. And they're also building another pad right now. There's half of the half of this thing has been completed down the Cape already. So yeah, I mean, there's always going to be risk, but you know, when you're pushing the envelope of aerospace engineering like this, no one's ever tried doing anything like Starship ever. Closest thing would be the space shuttle, and that was complicated, right? Anytime you're going to push the envelope, it's really easy. That's a really convenient opinion to have. Oh, well, it's going to be a waste of money if it explodes. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. In other news, water is wet. You think you think people would just doubt doubt it and call it a waste of money anytime we tried doing something a little bit out of the cookie cutter for a change? So that's what I mean, dude. You, SpaceX SpaceX is well aware of the risks involved. Of course they are. Duh. Elon's well aware of the risks involved. It's his money. You know what I mean? And if if he's willing to send it, well, it might blow up. It might work. Who knows? You know what I mean? It might work. Might not. Either way, we're going to have a lot of fun. I hope it works. I don't think they're going to catch a rocket on the first try, though. I really don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be close, but I don't think they're going to get it. I think it'll get snagged, and it'll do a sideways and then fall on its side, but that's just me. <clears throat> at, 30, at 39A, how will they handle Falcon 9 launches? Well, I mean... I, 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 MG, I, I know you know more about pads than this, so I, I, I'm not understanding the context of the question. Launch starships when Falcons aren't on the pad. 
Just putting it out there. I mean, guys, you gotta you gotta understand, like, and we were talking about this the other day. The it, it violent the 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 people that claim to know more than SpaceX that like pose that are like, oh, I'm super skeptical of Starship. Well, yeah, it's very easy to be skeptical when somebody brings something new to the table. It's a very convenient opinion to have, don't you think? How many people said Henry Ford couldn't mass produce automobiles? How many people called him a quack for trying to do it? Yeah, who's laughing now? Henry Ford's still laughing, even in his graves. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a very easy, that's a very easy and convenient, it's very easy to be a doubter. That's very simple. It's a very simple opinion. It ain't, it ain't any revelation there, you know what I mean? Oh, the Falcon infrastructure at 39A isn't fixed? No, 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 no. Okay, that's where we're getting confused. Um, no, 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 no. Here, MGB, let me show you this. Um, where is the flyover footage? Here, check this out. This video. This video was brought to you by Brilliant. So this is the NSF flyover vid. Here, let me show you the part where they zoom in on the pad, dude. Look at this. Oh, they ain't building it on the pad. They're building Starship's pad off to the right. See what I'm saying? That's how they're going to handle it. So, so launch when, what I mean, that's what I mean when I say launch when Falcon 9 ain't on the pad. So launch this. They, it's a two pad complex now. See what I'm talking about? Pad 39AB. That's right. How are they going to get a ship over there? <laughs> Jim, now you realize why I spend a lot of space news segments looking at uh, looking at blueprints of uh, roads and stuff around the Kennedy area, right? Now you now you know. I have no idea how they're going to get it over there. I've been able to get I've been able to trace the route as far as the turning basin at 39A. Uh, in other words, I have no idea how they're going to get it there. They're going to need some kind of heavy infrastructure, which is, once again, Jim, it's very interesting because we keep, I keep hearing whispers and we see NASA's solicit, uh, NASA's putting out solicitations for renting out high bays inside of the VAB. Who would need a 500 foot open space for a gigantic rocket like that? It's only really one customer, dude. That fits the bill, you know what I'm saying? I've also heard, I've also I've, I've heard things about crawlers being used in Starship transportation, but I can't prove any of that. So don't just take it for what it's for. Take it at face value, you know what I mean? So, dude, I don't know. I know that the crawler way goes right. <sighs> crawler, nice. I know that the crawler way goes right up to the hiff. So, and I, I have a theory that, and this is just my theory. This isn't based off of anything that anybody's told me or anything. I, I have a theory that they're not going to make starships at the Cape at first. Boca Chica is already up and running. They're going to move starships via a barge over to the Cape. So that gets starships to the turning basin at 39A because there's a, there's a path from Port of Brownsville in Boca Chica there's a path from Port of Brownsville in Texas all the way to 39A Basin, uh, the turning basin at the VAB. So that gets it that far. And SpaceX is looking, Space, you know, NASA's putting out all these solicitations for VAB, for the VAB high bays. And, you know, we have Starship pretty much confirmed all the way to the turning basin at 39. So, like I said, put two and two together you know what I mean do you think that the next starship will be built in space due to limitations down here on earth uh, I think using something like starship to build bigger vessels up in space ideas if that's what you're saying yeah that's a good idea but that is a more complicated mission architecture big time Big time complicated mission architecture. They are already building the jigs to transport Starship horizontally over the ocean. 
how do you know that dot com? Can you give me a can you give me a source or are you saying this would be before Roberts Road gets going with production? Correct. Yep, yep. Yeah, someone is it's a pretty obvious it, that one's pretty obvious, dude. That ain't some that ain't some revelation. This is why I spend my time, guys, looking at, you know, the environmental impact reports uh, about building different roads and what type of roads and infrastructure they SpaceX is trying to build down there. This is why I spend entire space news segments looking into this stuff. Cause check this out. So there's Roberts Road. This picture is from like 2013 or 2014 or something. Let's zap it all the way up to here. Take a look. Actually, in the newest flyby footage, there's a heavy, there's a heavy concrete road being built right here, and then this road is getting extended to here, which gives you a path for starships that are being manufactured in inside of the high bay right here. They're gonna come out. They're gonna turn this way. They're gonna go down here. And then they're going to go this way. They're going to go down this road. Either that or they're going to go out to Kennedy Boulevard and go that way. But that's another story. But it's really easy to spot heavy infrastructure. You know that... See, see the huge radius on this corner right here? Huge radius on that corner indicates that something big is designed to go around this corner. And this road, which is this strange three-lane road with no median, is a heavy has a heavy subgrade, meaning it's designed for heavy traffic. Like, oh, I don't know, Falcon 9's being transported into the Falcon 9 refurbishment hangar? Probably has something to do with it. Like, see the Falcon 9 that's just sticking out right there? That probably gave it away. See this right here? So, we can find the heavy infrastructure for Starship, right? Now, here's how I know. All right, so once again, I've told you I can get I can get Starships to the Turning Basin right here. I can track it all the way to the Turning Basin with given information. What does that mean? Well, okay, we know that SpaceX is building these things in Boca Chica, which is well over here, right? We're in the very, very southern tip of Texas right there. Hey, these are updated too. Very nice. There's the pad. See, there's your uh, chopper sticks. Chopper sticks in the pad. Mm, now I'm hungry. Is great an issue? Will they need a giant $1 billion transport? I don't know. So here's the build site right here. So we know that they can move starships down Highway 4. It's been done when they move them to the pad. But they're going to have to move one down this way. They're going to have to move one backwards down Highway 4 right because there's no heavy ports over here there's no there's no place for a ship to get in here unless they dug unless they dug a channel over here in the south bay right here all the way to there that's expensive probably wouldn't want to do that especially since you have a deep water port right here in the port of brownsville see how dark that water is it's really deep it's really deep because they bring big pieces of equipment in here and then they scrap them uh aircraft carriers actually there's an aircraft carrier in one of these slips right now kitty hawk they rolled it in the other day so now check this out look at this road someone take a look remember what i told you about weird radius or weird radii on roads that's very weird look at the amount of open space right there why would you have such big open space on this road? And we know SpaceX from permits. We know they, they, they paid for this road to get made. Look, see what I'm talking about? What the hell is that thing about? Well, how big is super heavy? 220 feet? Hmm. Ha. Huh. Interesting. It's almost like it's exactly designed for that. See this big open area right there? Look at the radius on that corner. If you draw, if you just have a line that's 220 feet long at any particular point, check it out. Big enough to move a super heavy booster around. See what I mean? That's a dead giveaway. Starships are going to be moved here. Starships and Super Heavy is going to be moved here, and they will be moved on their side if they need to. I don't know if they, they could go vertical all the way. That would be a little bit, a little crazy for an SPMT to move that far because we are a good distance away from the build site at this point. If we go to here, 
clear that out. That's a good distance away. So you're about 10 miles. But it's very clear that this road is built with a weird radius for heavy infrastructure because the road is built out of concrete. It's concrete, it ain't asphalt. It's built for something heavy. And see what I mean about weird medians and stuff? This road was built to move something big on it. And then if you go down the other way, look, it's got a huge grade on it. This road has a gigantic freaking grade. Look at the culvert. The culvert is freaking huge. This is where flood water goes in and out. That's why part of it is a bridge. See it? And then still, it's all concrete, all concrete. Very weird, very weird sized road. See, look, bike lanes. What are, what are these? Are these bike lanes? No, it's a weird sized road because it's designed to move super heavy or starship around. And see, there's another drainage. There's another culvert right there. And then take a look. Look at the radius up here. Same idea. Big freaking honking radius here, because they're just, they're they're gonna move them down here to the heavy to the heavy port. There's your path all the way, and then from there it's to the turning basin at 39A. See what I mean? You can find the infrastructure if you know what you're looking for. They're called breakdown lanes. <laughs> oh yeah, sure they are. Yeah, I wonder what's going on right here. I wonder what that's about. Interesting. And I wonder what this is about. It's clearly part of that construction. Hmm. Maybe we'd have to go look. They clearly have graded this out for a reason. Yeah, exactly, Thomas. I think they're going to move them, move them on their side. Probably a checkpoint for road closures. Why does it look so choppy? What do you mean? Choppy? That's just photogrammetry on the image, dude. It's the photography. FX, yeah, that's just the photography. That road is, yeah, see what I mean? It's the photogrammetry. When they take pictures, they use light shading to try and, to try and interpolate terrain height, and sometimes it doesn't work. That's called photogrammetry. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Something is coming. Okay. Someone, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I got I got Starship all the way to the turning basin. I'm not, that's why I've been like, oh, what's going on with the VAB so much lately? If vertical transport is an option, they will do it. Laying a ship or booster on its side is not as easy as it sounds. And sure, well, duh, of course, but that radius suggests that they're thinking about it human. SpaceX wouldn't make that weird radius on that road if they weren't thinking about it. How big is the Pegasus barge and can it handle a super heavy inside? It won't fit with the grid fins. It won't fit with the grid fins. Other than that, yeah, sure. I just went down a rabbit hole. I just found a document called Electromagnetic Compatibility and Grounding Requirements for Space System Facilities. Oh, boy. Yep. <coughs> the light... <coughs> <laughs> the, the lightning towers. <coughs> Sorry, still get still getting COVID out of my system. <coughs> Arceus, nine month resub. Cool, cool. Uh, people wanted me. People wanted me to talk about something else. Talk about what they wanted to talk about while I'm trying to explain something to somebody. I mean, there were those jigs for Mark II when it was going to be moved from Sitka. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do we have any idea as to whether SpaceX will be doing final construction of the boosters or Roberts Road? I don't know someone, I don't have that, I don't have the scope of that, but uh, I think I'm getting the black lung pop. <laughs> I don't have, I have it to the turning basin. I have starships from Texas all the way to the turning basin and I can't see the heavy infrastructure from there. It's really hard to figure it out. It's coming right for you. A special weather statement has been issued for Marlboro. Schwersley and Hudson until 6.15 p.m. Wind and hail, pea-sized if possible. I mean, I'm not that, but 
I am right after that, though. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm on the border of that, Jim. Interesting. Do you have a moving day yet? I hope you're well for that. Yeah, it's in about a month cooking. Hold on. They put an updated one. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's... 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 Yep, I'm in that one. Severe thunderstorm warning, including Newton Mass. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, <laughs> oh, frick. Yep, all right, so we're going to hear some T-boomers here in a second. Here, let me turn on the, uh, let me turn on the amp. We'll be able to hear it. Dude, we did this last time. The coils on my guitar pick up the EMF from a lightning bolt. You'll hear it. It'll go, it'll click on the stream if there's lightning. So I have the guitar up and running. You'll yeah, the the freaking magnetic co the the pickups on the guitar pick up the uh pick up the EMF from lightning, which is cool. All right. Anyway, uh what is this? John for this is a John Krause picture with the complex with Launch Complex 39E the pat a, the past site of the Apollo and shuttle and the current home of Falcon in the future launch pad of Starship as a backdrop. NASA space launch system and Artemis 1 are seen returning to the VAB. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. It's It's got two single coils and a humbucker. There, I'll show you. That's a great picture from John Krause. Put it in single coil? All right. There you go. She's in single coil. Uh, all right. <coughs> anyway, uh, let's go back over here and finish looking up that Starship footage. Here. No stairway. Denied. Congratulations on closing on the house. Thanks, MGB. Appreciate it, man. Try SCE to single coil. SCE to single coil. You hear that noise? That's the noise it'll make. It'll sound like this. Not, not that. Not that. That's too loud. That noise. You'll hear that. That. That's no easy feat in this day and age. Bay Area housing prices are a nightmare. Ugh. That's like the one. That's like the one spot in the country, MGB, that's worse than worse than Boston. Oh, that. That's the noise. That was quick. Tell me you guys heard that click. That. And there's the thunder. That one's a little far away, though. Well, I hope we don't lose power. I missed it. I, uh, I upped the volume. Okay. There it is again. There it is again. Here, we'll just listen. We'll just listen. The amp's behind a surge protector, human person, along with a UPS. Not worried about it. Can you turn off the air conditioning? Sure.
You heard that. Still a little ways away. Here, I'm just gonna be quiet for a second. I'm just gonna be quiet. That was a big one. That was a that was a big one. Did you guys hear the tick? It ticks off. The coils on the guitar pick up the lightning strikes. We could, Jack, yeah. But yeah, it'll sound like a tick that a Geiger counter makes, pretty much, and yeah. You heard that. Whoa, oh, man, dude, dude, that was close. Yo, yo. <laughs> that, that was loud. Damn, dude. Oh, let's go again. Jeez. Discovery, go at throttle up. Caviar. Oh, there was one at the end of that sub. <laughs> Have fun with that, Forge. You said a thing, Mutter? What's up, dude? A real-time lightning map. Oh, there you go. We were looking at this yesterday. Oh, there was one. Has a power infrastructure? 200 amp service, toasted, it's fine. Here comes one. We do back, yeah. Yo, that dude, I saw that one on the lightning. I saw that one on the lightning thing in a jigger. That lightning thingamajigger is pretty damn accurate. Dang, dude. That, 
You heard that. I'm on... <laughs> we can triangulate your exact position. There's a town called Newton in Massachusetts. It's just outside of Boston. I'm on the west side of Newton. Next to 128. If you really want to know, I don't really care. I'm not going to live here in a month anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But that's not information I was, I was ever not privy to. I don't care who knows that. That's no problem. I find that if you try to hide stuff like that, people on the internet will go and try and figure it out to spite you anyway, so... That's why I don't care if people know. There was one. I will find you and I will kiss you. <laughs> <coughs> Pretty much, Forge. We flew, yeah, we flew right past my house. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Alec, that's why I don't really care. Like, dude, there's people, oh, I got to hide that information. You, dude, if you hide it, people are just going to want to figure it out. It's not even worth it. <laughs> I'll desert nice. I'll come deliver space news in person. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of sick that we can detect lightning all over the world and have a public feed available to anyone. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. We'll do this for a little bit longer, dudes. Natick works just as well. I lived in Natick for three years when I was a kid. Hell, desert. Right near Main Street, actually. If you know... If you know Natick, there's a, yikes, there's a public slayer with a really nice ice cream place. The public square has a really nice ice cream place next to it. Also Casey's Hot Dogs. So, if you're popping in, you're wondering what I'm doing. I have a guitar over here. And the guitar has coils on it. And every time lightning goes off in the area, the coils pick it up. They pick up the EMF. See? You hear that? You hear that tick? There it is. There it is again. That's a lot of tick. I'm sure a bomb didn't just go off. Calm down, damn. There was a lot that just struck near Newton. We should hear the clap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> damn. Oh, there it goes again. And again. I don't like this at all. <laughs> no. Listen to that thing take off, man. <laughs> Your tower's telling you to stay away from the lightning. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. I can't believe this actually works. Oh yeah, it's starting to rain. Uh, 
how did you ever find out that this works? I started, I had the guitar on during a thunderstorm during a stream, and I, there, there was one. I had the guitar going dur during the stream, and we could. I heard ticks, and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And then we figured out it was this. Oh. Uh-oh. Wait for it. Man, that's a lot of lightning. Dude, I don't know about you guys, I love this noise. This noise. Uh-oh. Yeah, Jocket, right? Yeah, that's good. Listen for the clicks, dudes. Your trucks are safe? Yeah. Pretty much of it. I'm not hearing much thunder. Hearing a lot of cracks though. <laughs> nice glitter up, there you go. Dude, I can hear I can hear the, the coils start to pick up stuff. Like, I, I can tell you when it's going to tick because the distortion on the amplifier changes a little bit. See? Hear it? Oh, you got. I don't think you guys can hear that feedback. There was a tick. Gonna be loud. That one was still a little ways off. Dude, she's going crazy. She's going crazy. So if you're wondering what's going on, the coils are picking up the thunderstorm. They're picking up the the electromagnetic field from the lightning. And the coil is picking it up and every time it, every time lightning strikes the coil ticks, which is actually really cool. Oh, just like that. And that. And that. That's a lot of EMF. Um, I'm going to try to hush it up a little bit. I'm gonna put this down. That's a. I'm gonna. I'm just. We're just gonna put that over there. And just. 
I'm just going to put that over there and not be near it. Because that thing started wailing for a second. We're storm chasing over here. This stream is brought to you by Depends. <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dude, it's so strange. I can hear the tick, and then we look at the lightning the lightning map, and it pops up. That That's weird, man. That is very... I mean, like, obviously, like, physics doesn't change, but it's still cool. for a little bit longer. Twitching that's out of line. That's that's out of line, man. It's out of line. You gonna kick me you gonna kick me like that when I'm down suffering from the COVID? Oh uh oh. I just heard a tick. That one was a good distance away, good distance west of me. I still do, Jackal. I had it this entire week. Not a fun week for your boy. Okay, one more. Cool, right? I didn't know that. The lightning Mac just said that there's one like right near me. That was at the ninety ninety five interchange. That's, that's a little bit north of me. Didn't hear anything, though. So, once again, if you're wondering what we're doing, I have a guitar that's piped into an amp that's piped into the stream for playing the guitar badly. But the coils on the guitar, the pickups, the thing that make it an electric guitar, are picking up the EMF from the lightning, that's, the lightning storm that's over my house right now. So every time we hear lightning, or every time there's lightning, you can hear it. You can hear it tick on the coil like that. I probably talked over. You probably didn't hear it. I don't know what that means, Hellfish, but that sucks. Here, I'll go back to holding this thing again. That was fun.
come on. That's not a noise I've ever heard this thing make. It sounds like we're dialing in a particle beam. It's like MMC, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean that I have that and I have the distortion crank, Dave. All right, we'll listen for another minute and then then we'll get back to space news. It's cool though. Can you come here, please? Yeah, all right, that's enough. Uh, there we go, that's enough. All right, so fellas, I'll put on the rest of the NSF video here, uh, and we'll we'll go from there. That was cool, that was cool. Well, of course I put it down, it went. All right, here, let me put that on, and I'll go see what Bree, what Bree needs. I'll be right back.
Give me one second. I'll, I'll put on another video here. Uh, let's see. V2 loader. Oh, this was yesterday. All right, cool. Let's check this one out. Guys, I'm going to have this going here for a moment. I got to help Bree with something. Be right back. One second. See any interest, anything interesting from this video? And uh, the only thing that I said when I was muted is yellow truck. Yellow truck! That's right, MGB, yep.
Where did they end up taking this thing? I don't think they took it over any rivers. Get the frick up. Bum, 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 bum. That just looks weird to me. Act, what's going on, man? Huh. <coughs> sprunk, 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 sprunk. <laughs> I think they took four and put it over here. I think they put it by the other starships. It doesn't mean it doesn't look strange. That's a monster, dude. Monster. That's strange. <laughs> That's just strange. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they brought it in the back. Yep. Park it. Yep. Yeah, Foz, I turned the AC back on. We took Booster 5's place. Yep. Yep. It is strange seeing skyscrapers move, indeed. Why don't they make a hop test for landing on the chopsticks? Uh, because they want to do orbital, human. I don't know. It's a good question. Those are definitely different grid fins, huh? They don't look as thick as the other grid fins. When are they aiming for orbital flight? A uh, couple weeks. Seriously, a couple weeks, dude. And then there's that guy. Late July. You know they're going to do the test on a day that I'm moving, right? Like, we know that this is going to happen. Right? You got the neon drip. <laughs> just tune in. What is the goal for today? Well, we're just looking at Starship footage coming out of Boca Chica from the last couple of days. Elder Pie? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on today. And then, I don't know. Play some Kerbal after this, I think. I mean, if it happened now, it's your fault. You said it. It was going to happen anyway, so it doesn't matter. Man, finally caught a stream live. Yeah, I've had COVID, man. It's not been a good week for your boy. Laughing pipes. Yeah, right, Kane? I'm good, Nazalik. How are you? No launch today. No, 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 no. I think technically there was a launch this morning, early this morning. Technically, Virgin Orbit launched, but yeah, nothing. Not no 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 launches right now at least. Well. 
Oh, look at, look at, look at, look at the, 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 the loader. Oh. Oh. That's just bizarre. It is a payload change out room. And they just they're just gonna lift that sucker. They just lift the net sucker with the crane. It's just gonna load some Starlinks in there. Whatever. Thing's got its own power box on it. Hey, Tipsy, it's yeah. The payload is in there, it, and the they load the payloads are Starlink satellites, and they're flat, so they stack a bunch of Starlink satellites in here. They they put them in the top, and then this thing has a an extendable arm. This thing has an extendable arm that goes out this side, and then they just slide the Starlink satellites into Starship and Starship has the inverse of this inside of it and they stack up inside of the payload bay. Watch. Watch, uh, here. Watch right in the center of your screen, right where my mouse cursor is. That when the, when it cuts to the next shot. Watch, right? See? See it open up? Hey, little bay door. Yeah, frickin' Pez dispenser. I think this was testing, yeah. That's what the, I mean, that's what NSF's footage says. <clears throat> Watch, they're just gonna bring it up and then they'll extend the arms out the Pez dispenser. And when they do, it'll, it'll slip into position. Watch, it'll stop moving. See? See, you can see the track going right in. That's weird, man. That's very weird. That's that's just strange. It like locks onto the side. Ew, tongue kissing. <laughs> yeah. Boss, she's a freaking beast, dude. Have you seen this thing? It's a freaking monster. Look at the door. I am Bender. Please insert girder. Pretty cool. What's this, Thomas? I'm just closing up some links. Already got that one. Already got that one. Already got that one. Okay, cool. I saw them loading it in the hangar. Cool, man. The new grid fins are the same width and length, but about 20% thinner. The density of the grid has increased about 60%, trading a bit of mass penalty for more lift on RTLS. These are still stainless steel, not the titanium grid fins. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah, they definitely changed them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Now, this is what was linked a little bit earlier. What is this? NASA reviews SpaceX's Roberts Road expansion. Ah, yeah, okay. Cool, that was the press article about the thing that we already saw. Sweet, and then this one, Forge linked this. I wonder what do you wonder what this website? What is this? Gravitics.space. Space stations without compromise. Okay, space for people. We're growing the number of people living and working in space through human-centric space solutions. Okay. Next generation hardware. Beginning with StarMax, Gravitix is bringing high quality shipyard style fabrication to the aerospace industry. 
Starmax, our flagship space station module. Explore Starmax. What is this? I'm exploring the largest interior volume in a standalone spacecraft ever. Unprecedented by volume and safe safety factor position, Starmax is to be a key building block in a new era in space flight. Flexible configurations, interfacing CBM, customizable windows, integrated solar cells, it's a game changer. Ten mil thick aluminum hull, three eighths of an inch. Okay, that's pretty thick. Space armor is mounted four inches, one hundred two millimeters off of the exterior of the hull for cable management and thermal insulation. Optional solar cells. Capacity for fifty metric tons. What's the diameter of this thing? Seven point six mil, it's up the top. Oh, yeah. Huh. What will it launch on? That really leaves you only to two rockets guys 7.6 millimeter not millimeter 7.62 millimeter nice 7.6 meters really only gives you two rockets sls you could launch an s on an sls block 1b or starship that's it there's nothing else new glenn's fairing to my knowledge is that's it's too small <coughs> new glenn <coughs> new glenn has a seven meter fairing Will it fit on in a starship? It will fit in a starship, yes. With about four feet on each side. Inside a starship's payload bay. Please be SLS. We need more of those launches. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that's cool. Talk is cheap, though. Oh, there was a lightning strike. You got a bunch of wall wallpapers and stuff. Either that or it doesn't need a fairing and it comes with its own nose cone. I guess. Oh, on another note, I did hear that Europe has Ariane 6 plan. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that thing can be standalone, B. I'm not sure, though. Hmm. Ariane 6, guys, we've known that. Firework, that's been a thing for a good amount of time, dude. Not to be a jerk or anything, but yeah, we knew that. Ariane 6 is not... is not big enough to move that module, no. Interesting. They're looking for a lot of lead engineers there, but anyway... <clears throat> cool alright guys I think that's a pretty good return to form for space news 
Um, in other news, here. There you go. There's your... D yep. That That's where Elon's been, if you're wondering. He, he's talking to the Pope. Yep. He's just... Yep. That is the Pope, yes. That is the Pontifex. It's probably like, Father, please. Please. Give Starship your blessing. Please. I need it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's just a joke. Probably you'd be like, no, I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> Strong genes, man, dude. Tell me, dude. Those, yeah, no, nope, those are, yep, those are definitely his. Yep, those are, those are his boys, man. Those are his boys for sure. <laughs> Go here. I'll link the picture. Look at it. You tell me, like, nope. Yep. Yep. Those, those are definitely Elon's boys, man. That's cool. Imagine, just four, just four more versions of you. That, that's kind of cool. Kind of like that idea. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for being dank. <laughs> yeah, they do that, Hypno. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> All right. I think that's everything, fellas. <coughs> <coughs> ah, come on now. What if they really are clones? I mean... Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> this response, what's that said, Chuck? <coughs> Did you make those four in a copier? Those are definitely his boys, man. That's cool to see. That's very cool. Oh, yeah. And here, this is the picture from Stephen, or the video from Stephen Marr. Look at this. Yeah. Discovery, go at throttle up. Damn. Damn. Or, you know, the volume could just get cranked. You know, that works too. Even though I just literally hit the mute button. Here, let me just turn the mute. Let me just do the opposite of what you want. Look at the people walking around down there. And then look at the rest of the... It's just... All right. Okay. Okay. Yikes. Now, that's, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Current net on the launch. August 23rd is the net right now. Nuts. It's crazy how big that thing is. Just looking around, making sure we got everything. All right, I think we got all of it. Okay. All right. We got it all. All right, how much time do we have until racing? Seven. We got about four hours. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm up for playing for playing Kerbal yet. <laughs> you know, like I'm feeling okay, but uh, yeah.
trains? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Is the Pope Catholic? Tarkov? No, no. Um. No, I think I'll save. I think I'll save MLV construction for. Um, I think I'll save MLV construction for uh, next week. We're gonna hit Kerbal pretty much every day next week. Um, guys, I'm I'm feeling good thus far, but I think I might take a break just out of an abundance of caution, just because I'm still getting over COVID. I feel okay though. Um, I don't know. Let me let me take a look. CSGO Rage, please. Cities? Nah. Oh, the lightning just ticked. Lightning just ticked hard. There are also road closures next week for Booster 7 testing. Okay, cool. We'll get back into KSP pretty much every early hours next week. Uh, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Uh, keep in mind that, uh, keep in mind that I am, um, I have Tuesday, I'm taking Tuesday off, guys, so we're gonna hit it guns blazing basically on Wednesday. Sorry for taking so much time off lately. Between going to New Mexico, coming back, getting COVID, and then 4th of July weekend, I've, yeah, been a little nuts. It's been a little crazy, but, uh, we should hit it guns blazing soon. Uh, especially I want to, I want to have a couple of six day a week streams right before I move. Cause I'm going to need another week off soon. And I'm taking way too much time off from the stream. So, um, <coughs> just leave us here. Listen to the guitar clicking. <laughs> nah. Um, so let's see who we can drop a raid on for now. And then I'll be back for GTA racing. We have a chair stream. No. Remember, you're only human. Yeah, sir, totally. That's why I'm feeling good, but I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chill. I put in a solid seven, and then we'll do it. We'll do another four a little bit later for GTA. I don't know if I should go. I don't know if I should go through the whole thing. I might run out of breath. I might run out of breath. I might run out of energy. That's the thing with like COVID. You can't really be sure. When's your next KSP play? Uh, it'll probably be on Wednesday, Orbital Mechanic. Yeah, on Wednesday. Uh, I I want to play Kerbal right now, but I also don't want to push it because I'm just coming off of COVID. Uh, you know, like I notice that I'll start to get tired out when I start sweating, and the temperature hasn't really changed in here. I mean, I shut the AC off for a second when we were listening to lightning, but look. Sweating like crazy, dude. That's how I. That's how I know. Like you got to stop. Like I'll just start sweating out of the blue. It's very weird. Like it's not warm in here. It's 79 degrees in here. So that's not 79 Fahrenheit. It's like 26 C. It's not that warm, but I'm sweating like crazy. So I'm gonna take a break, uh, and I'll be back for GTA racing. So you know what? We'll just. I might come back a little bit earlier, so I'll just leave it. Um, <clears throat> I only just started streaming like the day after I got COVID. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I feel you. Yep. Yep. All right. I'll be back in a couple hours, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed space news. I hope you enjoyed, uh, Minecraft before that. Oh, I feel sick now. What the hell? Dude, I just get hit with the weirdest wave of nauseousness. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop and I'm going to go spend some time in the bathroom. I will be back in a little bit. Thank you very much for watching, guys.